Brass Memorial Field here at Washington and Jefferson. It's time for WPIL High School Baseball Playoff Action here on WMBS and the Triple Live High School Sports Network this afternoon. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs, number five seed in 4A, 13 and 5 overall, 9 and 3 out of Section 3 in 4A. Take on the number 12 seed, the Beaver Bobcats, 7 and 10 overall, 6 and 6 out of Section 2 in 4A. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupay is behind the camera this afternoon and Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital Studios, our pregame show. Being brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes. They'll get you ready for the game. They're located at 217 West Main Street in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-9812 for the Sprouse Insurance Group. Our live video stream today brought to you by MNR Transit and Ted Silva and Son Auto and Fender Repair. Laurel Highlands and Beaver, these two schools played in WPIL championship games. The last time we played spring baseball in 2019 in the respective classifications. Laurel Highlands fell to Shaler in the 5A title game. Beaver versus the defending WPIL 4A champs from 2019. The Bobcats defeated Blackhawk in the 2019 title game and actually made a run to the state championship game as well. And they're playing some pretty good baseball here down the stretch. They've won their last four games entering the WPIL playoffs. Defense has been the key for Laurel Highlands. The Mustangs have held their opponent to one run or less in eight of their 18 games this year. And they're turning to Joe Chambers on the mound this afternoon who pitched a six-inning perfect game the last time he was on the mound, May the 10th, against the Uniontown Red Raiders. Beaver on the other side. They're going to be turning to sophomore Jack Ray on the mound. The winner will take on either the number four seed North Catholic or 13th seeded Elizabeth Ford in the quarterfinals on Monday. Those two teams are playing this afternoon at Fox Chapel High School. We'll talk to Laurel Highlands head coach Scott Deberry when our Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show continues right after this. Going on now with DR for Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit seaharborchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is to GMS for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is for cash, title fees, and for payment. Residency restrictions apply. What supplies last? Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all of the details at 7499 8000 Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalov & White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley Mahalov and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, Stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Freaky fast, freaky good. Order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup. Jimmy John's, next to Walnut Hill Shop and Save. Accident can happen at any time. At Stewart Collision Service in Uniontown, we are here to repair your vehicle to pre-accident condition. Have dents? Stewart Collision Service does paintless dent repair. Need a touch-up or full body paint job? Our water-based paint system gives the best match for your color. So give us a call at 724-437-9381 or stop by 73 East Fayette Street for all your collision needs. We work with all insurances. Stewart Collision supports our local high school sports team and wish you the best this season. That's Stewart Collision Service, 73 East Fayette Street in Uniontown, 724-437-9381. 
Brian Morosak back on the Sprouts Insurance Group pregame show. High school baseball playoff action on WBS this afternoon. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs taking on the Beaver Bobcats in a 4A first round game at Washington and Jefferson College. Being joined by Laurel Highlands head coach Scott DeBerry and Scott, your Mustangs going 13 and 5 overall in the regular season, 9 and 3 in conference play. Seeded fifth in this 4A playoff field. Your thoughts on how the season ended and your playoff seeding here heading into the WPIL playoffs? I'm happy with uh, the seed that we got, and uh, I'm happy with uh, the way the season went. I mean, we lost a couple close games. I felt like we could have won. But uh, sometimes those kind of games make you grow a little bit as a team. I think uh, this team's faced a little bit of adversity this year, so hopefully that will be a benefit come playoff time. Your opponent, Beavers, playing some pretty good baseball here down the stretch. In fact, they've won four games in a row. They have. I've done a lot of research on them and uh, don't even look at the record because it, it really doesn't matter right now. You just kind of look at what they've done recently and uh, it's going to be one of those games if uh, we don't come ready to play that we could find ourselves behind quickly. So we have to come ready to play and take care of business and I believe that if we play to our ability that we'll be just fine. And historically they've been a pretty good program and a tough out in the WPIL playoffs. They have, and uh, it's uh, again, like I said, we're all right now. We're all even. The records really don't matter, so we have to come ready to play. And they have that uh, experience, like you said. Maybe some of their players weren't actually in those games, but they were around it, so they know what it's like. If you look at your team, with the exception of maybe that Albert Gallatin game, you've hit the ball well, and you've gotten solid defense here over the second half of the season. It has, and uh, I'm sure I've said before that we try to preach uh, pitching and defense because there can be days when the hitting's not there and you're, you're pitching and your defense has to keep you in games and uh, you find a way to win. And I think, uh, I think we've done that so far. Uh, like I said, like you said, other than the AG game where we had some defensive lapses, the one inning that basically cost us the ball game. Both Nick Kumar and Joe Chambers have pitched well for your Mustangs this season. Who are you going to go with on the mound here in the first round of the playoffs? I'm going with Joe Chambers. And, uh, I have Nick ready to go if, uh, if I, if need to be. I mean, it's, it's one game right now, and that's all we're worried about. So we, we're not going to leave anything on the table. Coach, we appreciate your time as always. Best of luck against the Bobcats. We'll see you at W and J. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. That's Laurel Island head coach Sky Deberry. The Mustangs taking on the Beaver Bobcats at Washington and Jefferson. We'll send the lineups right after this. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart, Calabrese, Hoppy, and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. of Uniontown and trade me in. Is your car trying to tell you something? With summer right around the corner and trading values so high and new inventory so low, why not trade it in for a certified pre-owned at Ford of Uniontown? And for your peace of mind, all of our gold certified go through a 172-point checkover. They come standard with a 7-year, 100,000-mile comprehensive warranty. And all of our blue certified come with a 139-point checkover and a 3-month or 4,000-mile powertrain warranty. With over 70 pre-owned units ready to go and financing as low as $299 for 60 months, why not listen to your car and take advantage of a great selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs? That's Ford of Uniontown, top of the hill across from Applebee's, 724-425-5980 or FordofUniontown.com. 
must qualify with Ford Motor Credit. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. I'm attorney Bill Martin of Radcliffe Law, and I've handled all sorts of workplace accident cases over the past 10 years. When you're hurt at work, your employer's main goal is to get you back to work. But you may not be physically ready to return. If you find yourself in a similar situation, call our workers' compensation team at Radcliffe Law at 724-439-3939. We'll meet with you and answer your questions at no cost. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. Prime Rozak back here at Ross Memorial Field at Washington and Jefferson just about set to go. Laurel Highlands taking on Beaver in this 4A first round game. The Bobcats to bat first here in the top half of the first inning. Let's take a look at their lineup leading off the right fielder Garrett Pander batting second. The center fielder James Finch batting third and playing third base number 24 Braden Hansen in the cleanup spot the DH Elijah Crow batting fifth and playing second base Brooks Miller batting sixth and playing shortstop Liam Dorsky batting seventh and playing first base Josh Oberst batting eighth and pitching number three Jack Ray and batting ninth the left fielder Zach Harris defensively for Laurel Highlands Carson D'Amico out in left Caden Early in center and Jake Flesher getting the start in right field Braden McKnight playing third Nick Kumar playing short Ty Sankovic is the second baseman Zach Koffler playing first Alex McLean catching and Joe Chambers pitching for Joe it's his ninth appearance of the season coming with a five and one record 2.10 ERA. He's worked 26 and two-thirds innings, given up 15 hits, 10 runs, eight of them earned, struck out 38, and walked eight so far this season. Umpires here today, Garrett Proper behind home plate, Paul McElvain at first, and Robert McBee at third, and we're set to go. The Mustangs in their home lights, red numbers, blue caps. The Beaver Bobcats and their away maroons with gray numbers and white pants, a little bit of white trim as Garrett Pander steps into the batter's box from the left side. The junior right fielder coming in with a 312 average as a homer and four RBIs. First pitch from Joe Chambers. On the way, a fastball missing low for ball one. Again, Chambers coming off of that six-inning perfect game last time out on May the 10th against Uniontown and Laurel Highlands head coach Scott DeBerry trying to ride his hot hand here today. 1-0 pitch. That one right down the pipe for a strike. Evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Chambers to Pander here in the top half of the first inning. Again, the winner to take on either the number four seed North Catholic or 13th seed at Elizabeth Forward. Those two teams playing at Fox Chapel. And there's Pander going opposite field left. And what a catch out there by Carson D'Amico. Able to haul it in out there in left field. And D'Amico barely got a glove on it. And that would have been extra bases for sure if that one got over the glove of Carson D'Amico. But... A nice grab out there from Carson out in left field. And we have our first out here in the top half of the first inning with the center fielder, senior James Finch, stepping into the batter's box here for the Bobcats. Finch with a 265 average and four RBIs so far this season. And Chambers will wind and fire the first pitch. Finch showing bunt, pulls back, pitch misses low and inside for ball one. So interesting strategy there from Finch showing bunt with nobody on base. And one out here in the top half of the first inning. And now Joe getting set with a 1-0. He'll wind and fire. Breaking ball in there for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. One and one. An all-artificial surface here at Ross Memorial Fields. So you'll see those infield ground balls scamper with some speed. And now the 1-1 one, one on the way here to Finch. Another fastball, a little one-hopper there in front of Alex McLean bouncing away to take the count to two and one. And you couldn't ask for better weather for high school baseball playoff action here on this Wednesday afternoon. Game time temperature around 80 degrees, bright sunshine, just a few stray clouds in the sky. So the count two and one, Joe Chambers to James Finch. One out here in the top of the first, and Finch with a shot. Look out here, deep to left. D'Amico backing up to the wall, and the ball will bounce over the wall for a book rule double. So a ground rule double. For James Finch, coming here with one out in the top half of the first inning. 
And that one was a couple feet away from a home run for the Beaver Bobcats. That'll bring up Braden Hansen, the senior third baseman. Hansen coming in with a 261 average and 11 RBIs, batting from the right side. And now Chambers working from the stretch here for the Mustangs. Glanges is back at Finch. First pitch on the way, misses high and outside here to Braden Hansen. And again, Chambers has been money as of late for the Mustangs on the mound. Hasn't had too many situations as of late where he's had to work from the stretch position. 1-0 pitch on the way, breaking ball, catching the outside corner for a strike. That'll even things up at 1-1. One and, one. and We could ask for a better vantage point here today for high school baseball playoff action located right behind home plate. Reach out and touch someone here today. And now the 1-1 here, Chambers to Hanson. Chambers long look back at Finch. Now will step off the mound here and regroup. So a big spot here for the Bobcats, top of the first inning, Finch in scoring position. Hanson at the plate, one out in the meat of the order coming up, and that one, pitch missing low and outside, and plenty of room here behind home plate. That allows Finch to get down to third base. And they count now two and one. Here to Braden Hanson. A little pressure now on the shoulders of Joe Chambers. Here in the top half of the first inning, Mustang seated fifth. Bobcats seated 12th. Again, Beaver the defending 4A champs from 2019. No spring baseball last year. 2-1 pitch on the way, swing and a miss. And we're even at 2-2. Two two. Another nice breaking ball there from Joe Chambers. Also have to thank Larry Kumar as well for helping us out this afternoon, helping us with our score bug feature on our video feed being housed on the Triple Live High School Sports Network link up on the WMBS Facebook page. And going around there for strike three is Braden Hansen. I don't think he liked the call. Now they're gonna they're asking for a check here of the bases. Hansen still standing in. And they're gonna say that's strike three. Second out of the inning. Hansen trying to appeal, but to no avail. So Hansen retired. And Elijah Crow will come to the plate. The senior DH coming in with just a 205 average and five RBIs. Chokes up on the bat, batting from the left side. Chambers from the stretch. Now will step off here again with Finch down at third. And certainly a big strikeout there for Chambers. Getting Hansen retired on a Close call there for the second out of the inning. Now the first pitch missing low and inside. And a good job there from Alex McLean to keep that one in front of him. If you get one that scampers by, there's a good chance with all the room we have here at Ross Memorial Park that Finch is going to score from third. Count 1-0 and oh now to Elijah Crow. Brooks Miller, the second baseman in the odd deck spot. Hoping to get a crack at things here in the top half of the first inning. Now the 1-0 pitch here to Crow. Misses high. Count now at 2-0. Oh. The Beaver dugout very vocal this afternoon. Bobcats dugout off to our left. Mustangs dugout off to our right. Scott Deberry is eighth year as the head coach of the Mustangs. Noah Medich, the head coach of the Beaver Bobcats. 2-0 -oh pitch on the way. Breaking ball. That's in there for a strike. And the count now at 2-1 and one here. Chambers to Crow. As we work here with two outs. Scoreless game. Top half of the first inning. For a first round action, Beaver Bobcats and Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Now the 2 1 pitch on the way. Another breaking ball in there for strike two. And Chambers has used that breaking ball so effectively so far this season, coming in with 37 strikeouts to eight walks so far this season. Now 38 after sending down Hansen here in the top of the first. Now a 2 2 pitch here to Crow. Comes back with a fastball swing and a miss. Strike three. So Chambers responds. Back to back strikeout, sending it out. Hanson and Crow to end this top half of the first inning. We're scoreless. Heading to the bottom of the first here on the Sea Operata Group High School Sports Day. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer wishes the best of luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs this season and in the playoffs. During these uncertain times, a lot of hard work goes into a successful season, and that includes the cooperation of players, coaches, and their families. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer commends all of those whose hard work has gone into making this a successful season. Like our local teams, Robert Schiffbauer is working hard to make life better for the residents of South Union Township. Good luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs from South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer. When you're a 
car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Currently in their 57th year of providing quality, reliable service to the community, Ted Silva and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly blueprint your vehicle for repair, and they will work with your insurance company. With a paint booth that utilizes the environmentally friendly waterborne paint process, Ted Self and Son not only cares for our community and our children, they care for our environment. Located on Atlas Road in Hopwood, it is the goal of Ted Silva and Son to alleviate the stress of an accident and assist you in any way possible. Family owned and operated for 57 years. Call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, LLC. Proud to sponsor local high school sports. Laurel Highlands coming to the plate here in the bottom half of the first inning. Let's set their lineup leading off the center fielder, Caden Early, batting second and playing second base, Ty Sankovic. Batting third, the shortstop, Nick Kumar, and the cleanup spot and catching Alex McLean. Zach Koffler batting fifth and playing first base. Braden O'Brien, the DH, batting sixth. Carson D'Amico in left field batting seventh. Joe Chambers, the pitcher, batting eighth. And Braden McKnight the third baseman batting ninth for the Mustangs. Defensively for Beaver, Zach Harrison left, James Finch in center, Garrett Pander in right, around the horn, Braden Hansen playing third, Liam Dorsky playing short, Brooks Miller playing second, Josh Obris playing first, Wyatt Ringer catching, and the pitcher is the sophomore Jack Ray, who works here out of the stretch. First pitch missing inside for ball one to Caden Early, the junior center fielder, coming in with a 388 average and eight RBIs so far this season for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And now Ray set with a 1-0 here to Early, swing and a miss there from Caden, and the count even at 1-1. One one. For Ray, it's his ninth appearance of the season, enters with a 3-1 record, 2.83 ERAs, worked 29 and two-thirds innings, given up 32 hits, 23 runs, 12 of them earned, and struck out 30 while walking. 15, so a 2-1 to one strikeouts to walks ratio so far this season for Jack Ray is early one to chase in there at the 1-1. Count now 1-2. and two. Ray to early, bottom of the first inning. Laurel Highlands and Beaver scoreless. The Bobcats stranded James Finch at third base after a book ruled double in the top half of the first inning. Now the 1-2 pitch a little high there to early. Evens up the count at 2-2. Two and two. Again, the Beaver Bobcats came in. Winners of four in a row. And Laurel Highlands, they've been hot down the stretch as well. The Mustangs just that one non-conference loss against Albert Gallatin in the month of May by a score of 6-4 to four back on May the 13th. And early when chasing there again, that pitch was outside from Jack Ray, but early trying to protect the plate went after it and came up empty. So Ray and early strikeout sending down Caden early, and we have one out here in the bottom half of the first inning, and that'll bring up the Mustang second baseman, Ty Sankovic, the shortstop, batting 400 with 10 RBIs. Batting here from the left side against the sophomore Jack Ray, who misses on uh, the first pitch there to Sankovic. Fastball missing outside, count at 1-0. Oh. The Bobcats finish in a fourth-place tie out of Section 2 and 4A and barely made it into the WPIL playoffs. Again, we mentioned it was a hot stretch of games over the final week of the regular season just to get in. They tied Quaker Valley for fourth place in Section 2 and 4A. Count now 2-0 and here to Ty Sankovic. Montour won that conference with a 10-2 conference record. Blackhawk and Newcastle also qualified for the postseason. 2-0 pitch finds the strike zone. Count now at 2-1. and one. The Mustangs finished in second place, solo second place in Section 3 and 4A. Conference record of 9-3. and three. West Mifflin 11-1 in the conference. Laurel Highlands handed the Titans their only conference loss back in early April. 2-1 pitch now to Sankovic. Goes opposite field left, and that one will drop right in front of Zach Harris, the left fielder. Sankovic rounds first. We'll head back to the bag for a one-out single here in the bottom of the first inning. And we've seen that a lot from Sankovic going opposite field left and giving the Mustangs a base runner here with one out in the bottom of the first inning with Nick Kumar, who's been red hot for Laurel Highlands, coming to the plate. Kumar now batting 5'11", has now homered three times this season, had a home run against California in the Mustangs' regular season finale last Friday, has driven in 19 runs on the season. Senior shortstop for Laurel Highlands, batting here from the right side with Sankovic on first and one out 
in a scoreless game here in the bottom of the first inning and a breaking ball there from the sophomore Ray. Misses high and inside and the count now 1-0 here to Nick Kumar. Kumar among the leaders in the WPIL as far as batting average so far this season. 1-0 pitch on the way and Nick a well hit ball here high in the air to right but getting under it and making the grab there is Garrett Pander the right fielder for the second out of the inning. Now I'll bring up the junior catcher Alex McLean who comes in with a 444 average and 15 RBIs for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. McLean's battled a couple of injuries so far this season but getting back close to Full strength here for the WPIL playoffs. Now Ray out of the stretch, breaking ball to McLean. Misses a little high and inside. Count now 1-0. and And the winner will take on either North Catholic or Elizabeth Forward. That game also at 2 o'clock start this afternoon. Those two schools playing at Fox Chapel High School. 1-0 pitch on the way and fouling that one back. Was Alex McLean to even up the... Count at one and one. In that top half of the first inning, Joe Chambers threw 17 pitches for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And the Mustangs trying to make Jack Ray work a little bit here in the bottom half of the first inning. Ray a little glance over at Ty Sankovich, who does have good speed. And let's see if the Mustangs try to move Ty in a scoring position here. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Fastball misses high. Now 2-1 and one to Alex McLean. And the inning started with Caden Early striking out. Ty Sankovic a single to left, and then Nick Kumar flying out to right field on a well-hit ball. Count out 2-1. and one. Ray to McLean. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball. Catches the outside corner for a strike. That was close. And we're even at 2-2. Two and two. First double high school baseball doubleheader here on WMBS this afternoon. Game two will have the California Trojans taking on Shady Side Academy at Hempfield High School. Tony Hanula will bring you all of the action here on WMBS. First pitch set for 430. Line drive here to right. Pander charging and getting for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs strand Sankovic at first after one. Scoreless Laurel Highlands and Beaver during the C.R. Brada Group High School Sports Day. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. General Dentist Dr. Edward L. Wietek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wietek performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wietek is also your place to go for full mouth reconstruction if you foot off going to the dentist for too long. Visit Dr. Wetech online at www.myuniontowndentist.com to view the Smile Gallery and see some of his patients' before and after photos. See what over 35 years of experience and a practice committed to learning the latest techniques can do for you or your family. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616. That's 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wietek, Jr. Moving now to the top half of the second inning. Beaver and Laurel Highlands scoreless here from Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson College. 4A first round action. 12th seeded Beaver Bobcats, 5th seeded Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Hitters 5, 6, and 7 due up for the Bobcats here in the top half of the second inning. Brooks Miller, Liam Dorsky, and Josh Obrist. It'll be the second baseman, Miller, to lead things off. The senior batting 300 with a homer and six RBIs. Joe Chambers, after throwing 17 pitches in the first inning, will start his second inning of work with a fastball that misses low and outside for ball one here to Miller. And the Mustangs with one change in right field here today than what we've been accustomed to seeing so far this year. Jake Flesher in right instead of Jace Hampy. Hampy... We understand not with the Mustangs here today. Hopefully we can get him back later on in the playoffs. 1-0 pitch finds the strike zone or even at 1-1. One one. 
Now the 1-1 one, one on the way. Fast ball catches the inside corner for a strike. Now 1-2 and two from Chambers to Miller. Chambers struck out Braden Hansen and Elijah Crow. Then the top half of the first inning. 1-2 pitch here misses outside. Count now even at 2-2. Two and two. Chambers to Miller. Again, Chambers... Last outing back on May the 10th through a six-inning perfect game against Uniontown over at Bailey. Well, actually, that game at Laurel Highlands High School at Landman Field. And this ball, a high chopper going foul down the third base line. It was close. Braden McKnight backed off and let the ball go foul on the left side. And the Mustangs' final conference series was against Uniontown May 10th and 11th. And Kumar picked up the win at Bailey Park, May the 11th for the Mustangs to get the sweep of that series. And there's strike three, another nice breaking ball from Joe Chambers, freezing Brooks Miller. So that's three straight strikeouts for Chambers. And we have one away here in the top half of the second inning with Liam Dorsky coming to the plate, the sophomore shortstop for the Beaver Bobcats, batting 262 with 12 RBIs. Bases empty. For Noah Medich's squad here in the top of the second as Chambers misses low and outside on the first pitch to Dorsky. And what a run Beaver had as the number six seed back in 2019 in this 4A playoff field. Had back-to-back -back shutouts against Bell Vernon and Highlands. Knocked off the Leopards 5 to nothing. 10 run the Golden Rams 10 to nothing. Count now 2-0 here to Dorsky and then won a WPIL semifinal round game here at Ross Memorial Park over Yak 7-2 before 10 running Blackhawk in the 4A title game 13-2. And the 2-0 pitch, fastball missing low and just like that, we count 3-0 here, Chambers to Dorsky. And Chambers came into this game with 30, no check that, 37 strikeouts to eight walks so far this season and finds the strike zone here on the 3-0. You'd have to think Dorsky was taking all the ways. It moves the count now to three and one. And Beaver had a nice run in the state playoffs as well in 2019. Wins over Punxsutawney 13-3. Newcastle 10-2 and another breaking ball for a strike there from Chambers. He works back into the count and has things full down at three and two. And after that 10-2 win over Newcastle in the quarterfinals, knocked off East Pensboro at Mount Aloysius, 7-5 in the semifinals, and lost to Sealands Grove in the 4A title game. And the 3-2 pitch, another breaking ball, missed that time for Joe. So Dorsky giving the Bobcats a base runner here with one out in the top of the second inning. And now Josh Obrist coming to the plate, the junior first baseman batting 256 with a homer and 12 RBIs. Obris now stepping in, batting from the right side. Chambers back to the stretch. A little glance over at Dorsky. Let's see if they try to get him in motion. And Chambers brings the heat. And Obris backing off, pitching there for a strike, and the count at 0-1. And Chambers, another look over the shoulder there of Dorsky. 0-1 pitch. Now to Obris, another fastball. This one chopped to McKnight at third. We'll go to second for the force out. That's going to be it. Despite the artificial surface, it was a little bit of a slow chopper there to McKnight. So sends it off on the fielder's choice 6-4 to retire the lead runner, Dorsky. That'll bring up the pitcher, Jack Ray, who comes in with a 333 average. The sophomore has driven in one run so far on the season. Now two outs here, game still scoreless, top of the second inning. And Chambers again finds the strike zone there to Ray in the count at 0-1-1. This is the first of three games being played here at Ross Memorial Park this afternoon. Another little check there of Obrist, who's back safely. Here at W&J, 5A action later on today. Peters Township taking on South Fayette. That'll be followed by Chartiers Valley and Bethel Park. That pitch missing low and outside to Ray. Evens up the count at 1-1. One one. The Triple Live High School Sports Network will have action of the final two games from here at W&J later on today as well. Again, game two of our doubleheader on WMBS as California... Taking on Shady Side Academy, Tony Hanul will bring you that action 
here on WMBS. 1-1 one, one pitch in there for a strike on the outside corner. Count now 1-2. and two. Joe Chambers to Jack Ray. Chambers three strikeouts so far, looking for number four here against Ray, batting from the eighth position in the Beaver batting order, but Ray a little check swing single out to right. Obris is going to head down to third, relay coming in, cut off by Nick Kumar, makes a throw back to first, and a head first slide back safely there from Ray. Puts runners on the corners here for the Bobcats and two outs in the top of the second inning. So Ray, kind of an excuse me single there for the Beaver Bobcats. That'll bring up Zach Harris, the senior left fielder, batting from the number nine position in the Bobcats batting order. 286 average for Harris with five RBIs. They'll get a courtesy runner here for the pitcher Ray. Let's see who they're going to jog out. A player making his way over to first base, trying to get a number on him here. Looks like number 10, that would be Marco Mamone. So Mamone running here for Ray. With Harris now at the plate. Game still scoreless. Top of the second inning, but the Bobcats threatening here with two outs. Chambers again from the stretch, brings the heat. Pitch in there for a strike. 0-1 to the senior left fielder, Harris. Now Chambers regrouping again. Bobcats making them work here today. As you would expect here in the WPIL playoffs. 0-1 pitch, misses low and outside. Good block there from McLean. We saw a couple of balls sneak by him back in the first inning. They had plenty of room here at Ross Memorial Park behind home plate and the backstop. And now the 1-1 on the way. Chambers with a runner going and no throw from the catcher McLean. Pitch missed for ball two. Now the count 2-1 two and one from Chambers to Harris. Now you have Mamone, the courtesy runner, at second. Obris to third. 2-1 pitch, fastball, hit opposite field right. Fleshar over there making his way to the line and making the grab for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs get out of a jam. Bobcats strand two out of the bottom of the second. Still scoreless, Laurel Highlands and Beaver. Here on the Sea Operata Group High School Sports Day. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days. At life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service. Real service. From a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank. At your service. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer wishes the best of luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs this season and in the playoffs. During these uncertain times, a lot of hard work goes into a successful season, and that includes the cooperation of players, coaches, and their families. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer commends all of those whose hard work has gone into making this a successful season. Like our local teams, Robert Schiffbauer is working hard to make life better for the residents of South Union Township. Good luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs from South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer. Bad hair Day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Zach Coffer leading off the bottom half of the second inning for Laurel Highlands, fouling off the first pitch there from Jack Ray. It's Koffler, Braden O'Brien, and Carson D'Amico here in the home half of the second. Hitters 5, 6, and 7 for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Koffler, the senior first baseman, coming in with a 282 average, a homer and 12 RBIs. And right now he's behind 0-2 after the first pitch was fouled off. Ray finds the strike zone on the outside corner with a fastball, and Koffler behind 0-2, Coffler's lone home run of the season came against Elizabeth Forward down at Wiley Field in Elizabeth. 
earlier this month. No two pitch from Ray to Kyle for Mrs. High. Count now one and two. Again, Ray threw 16 pitches in that bottom half of the first inning. Joe Chambers has thrown 39 pitches through two innings for the Mustangs. As the Bobcats have made Joe work a little bit here this afternoon. One, two pitch to Koffler. Breaking ball hit him on the elbow. And they're going to say Koffler did not make an attempt to get out of the way of it. And they're not going to award him first base. Wow. The count will be two and two. There you come. And Scott Deberry now coming over, talking to our home plate umpire, Garrett Proper. Upset with that call. You don't see that called very often. But Koffler plunked and not getting first base. Now remain in the batter's box. Count now two and two. Ray to Koffler. And this game's still scoreless as we work here in the bottom of the second. Ray's 2 2 to Koffler, and Koffler goes opposite field left, but it's caught by the shortstop, Liam Dorsky. Tough play there from Dorsky, had a retreat and able to snare it out of the air for the first out of this bottom half of the second inning, robbing Koffler of a base hit. And that'll bring up Braden O'Brien. And boys, O'Brien had some key hits for Laurel Highland so far this season. The sophomore DH today batting. 333 with 10 RBIs. Earning the start here in this WPIL first round playoff game. Takes ball one from Jack Ray. We'll see how this half inning pans out. If that hit by pitch that was ruled only a ball will come back and bite the Mustangs. 1-0 pitch in there for a strike. 1-1 one one now. Jack Ray to Braden O'Brien. Again, Ray from the stretch. 1-1 one one pitch on the way. Fastball misses low and outside. Count moves to 2-1. Again, our live video stream here today. Brought to you by MNR Transit and Ted Silva and Sun Auto and Fender Repair. I have to thank those two companies and all of our fine sponsors here today. Bringing you more. Local high school sports here on WMBS. WPIL playoff action. First of two here on WMBS. Yeah. And O'Brien, a little screamer, just going foul down the first baseline. Evens up the count at two and two. And Tony Hanola will have California taking on Shady Side Academy from Hempfield High School on the way next. First pitch scheduled at 4.30. And we'll have more high school baseball playoff action on WMBS tomorrow. The Brownsville Falcons taking on South Park at West Mifflin High School. And we'll have a video stream of that game for you as well here on WMBS. And now O'Brien punched out for strike three as Ray finding the outside corner there. And O'Brien goes down for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up... Carson D'Amico, the junior left fielder, coming in with a 353 average and 10 RBIs. The good news for both of these teams, the WPIL quarterfinals won't be played until Monday, so any pitchers used here today will be able to come back if needed on Monday, but the quarterfinals and semifinal round games will be played on back-to-back -back days, quarterfinals on Monday, semifinal round on Tuesday, so teams will certainly have to use multiple pitchers for those two rounds if they should be lucky enough to advance in the WPIL postseason. First pitch from Ray, missed to D'Amico. And now the 1-0 on the way. Catches the outside corner for a strike, and we're even at 1-1. One and one. And D'Amico coming in with a 353 average has been solid all season. In fact, the Mustangs have gotten production up and down their lineup. All nine batting today have at least a 262 average. A 1 1 pitch misses low and outside. Counting out 2 and 1. Ray to Carson D'Amico. Ray looking for a 1 2 3. Bottom half of the second inning. Ray a long look in now to the catcher Wyatt Ringer. 2 1 pitch on the way, and D'Amico fouls that one into the netting. Count now goes to 2 and 2. Interference. Now they're going to call. Catcher's interference here. And D'Amico will get awarded first base. So the Mustangs get a base runner via catcher's interference. So we've seen a couple of calls we don't see too much. A catcher's interference call and then a hit by pitch where Koffler is not awarded first base. 
But nonetheless, D'Amico, a base runner for Laurel Highlands with two outs here in the bottom of the second, and Joe Chambers at the plate, batting 262 with 11 RBIs. And now he'll call time and pull outside the batter's box. Bray a long look in again here to Wyatt Ringer. Now a glance back and look at D'Amico over at first. Now he'll check him, head for a slide back safely. I have to think it's somewhat of an adjustment for the players who are used to playing on a natural grass, a natural dirt surface, now to go to the artificial surface here in the postseason. The Mustangs have played a couple of games this year on the sport turf. That pitch in there for a strike to Chambers, counted 0-1-1. The opening conference game, Laurel Highlands played down at West Mifflin. They also played a non-conference game, which they rallied back in the top of the seventh inning for a win over Greater Latrobe. That game played in temperatures that were hovering below 30 degrees. No one miss, misses high there, high and outside there to Chambers, counting even at one and one. Mustangs trying to make something happen here with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. This game's still scoreless. Now Ray again trying to check D'Amico, who's back safely, another head first slide. Count still even here at one and one. And Ray now slowing down the pace of this game a little bit. 1-1 one, one pitch to Chambers, swing and a miss. Got now one and two. It's 325 down the lines here at Ross Memorial Park. 365 to the alleys and 390 to straightaway center field. This complex right next to Wild Things Field as well where they'll play the WPIL championship games, June 1st and 2nd, and there's strike three as Chambers frozen. Third strike out of the game for Jack Ray, and after two, Laurel Highlands and Beaver scoreless here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Day. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, open right. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every right. day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. Now it's your first Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease this to GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is for cash, title fees, and for payments. Residency restrictions apply. What supplies last? Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Moving now to the top half of the third inning. Beaver and Laurel Highland still scoreless. Bobcats with the top of the order due up. Garrett Pander, James Finch, and Braden Hansen here in the top of the third. Joe Chambers has thrown 39 pitches through two innings. Jack Ray on the other side for Beaver has thrown 34 pitches through two innings of work. Brian Rozak alongside Jerry Dupay. Larry Kumar helping us out with our score hub here today. And Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital studios. We thank you for joining us. Whether you're listening on WMB or watching our broadcast via the Triple Live High School Sports Network or the link up on the WMBS Facebook page. Nice to be back for WPIL High School Baseball Playoff Action. Chambers first pitch here to Pander. Will check swing. Did he go? Third base umpire Robert McBee says no. And they count at 1-0. Pander flew out to Carson D'Amico in left field first time up. Came in with a 3-12 average, a homer and four RBIs. Pander the junior playing right field for the Bobcats here today. And a swing and a miss there at the low pitch from Chambers. Evens things up at one and one. And Ray really has gotten off to a nice start on the mound for Beaver throwing early strikes. 
has mixed up a nice fastball and change up. Has had the Mustangs off base a little bit. Chambers falling well off the mound there, missing on a low pitch to Garrett Pander, and they count now at two and one. Now the two one on the way. This one chop foul. Takes the count now two and two. From Chambers to Pander. As we work here in the top of the third inning. Now the 2-2 pitch out of the way. Another breaking ball. That one misses high and outside. And that'll take us full to three and two. Beavers mustered two hits so far today. Mustangs just one payoff pitch here. Well high and outside for ball four. So Chambers issues a leadoff walk to Pander. Here in the top half of the third inning, and that'll give the Bobcats a base runner with nobody else. And they've made Chambers work so far, 39 pitches through two innings. Now James Finch at the plate. He had a book rule double to left first time up. Senior center fielder came in with a 265 average and four RBIs. Now showing bunt, and he'll bunt it foul on the left side. They count 0 and 1. Finch looking down the third baseline. Head coach Noah Medich looking for some instruction. A throw over to first. Head first slide back safely there from Pander. And they count 0-1 here to Finch. Showing bunt and pulling back is Finch. Count now even at 1-1. One one. Chambers another glance over his shoulder. And another check there of the runner Garrett Pander. And this game still scoreless. Beaver threatening, showing bunts, and again sending it foul. There is Finch. Got now one and two. Again, Chambers looking back over at first. Had for a slide back safely there again from Pander. And that ball, a line drive off the glove of Nick Kumar. But a flecked into left field. And the relay comes in from Carson D'Amico. So Kumar trying to make a diving grab there and able to haul it in. Let's see how they score it. And they're going to give Finch a single. And now the Bobcats with two on and nobody out with Braden Hansen coming to the plate. Hansen struck out swinging last time up. This ball bunted, going right back to Chambers. will make the throw over to first, covering the bag there. Tyler Sankovic for the first out of the inning. So the sacrifice advances Pander down to third and Finch into second. Hey, Jerry, stop the stream and restart if they lost the back of the trip for whatever reason. Just stop the stream and restart it. You got me? That'll bring up Elijah Crow. Crow struck out swinging last time up. He'll show Bunny. Pops it right up. Goes right to Chambers for the second out of the inning. Boy, that couldn't have worked out any better for Laurel Highlands. 
And Crow popping it up right back to Joe. Trying a little squeeze there. It's on. And now Brooks Miller will come to the plate. Miller struck out looking. The lead off the top of the second inning. And now Scott DeBerry out to talk to Joe Chambers. Alex McLean also making his way out. And the Mustangs having a little meeting here. And Chambers threw 39 pitches through two innings. Brooks Miller, the fifth batter that Chambers will face here in the third. Now Miller will step in. And you have Pander down at third, Finch at second. Chambers on the mound. The first pitch, a fastball, hit into right center field, and Flesher with the grab to end the inning. So once again, the Bobcats strand two will head to the bottom of the third. Still scoreless, Laurel Islands and Beaver here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. With the rest of the world, Peach and Pharmacy is following the developments of the COVID-19 pandemic. Your safety is a priority at Peach and Pharmacy. For prescriptions, you have many options. Peachins offers free delivery, free mail, and curbside pickup. If you come into the store, Peachins follows all of the CDC and state safety recommendations. As always, if you have concerns about your medications, call 724-626-9600 or visit Peach and Pharmacy inside the Peach and Market in Connellsville or online at Peach and Pharmacy. Filing for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley, Mahalov & White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand right. your rights and give options under me. the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley, Mahalov & White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life. Moving now to the bottom half of the third inning, Laurel Highlands and Beaver still scoreless here from Ross Memorial Park. The Mustangs with Braden McKnight, Caden Early, and Ty Sankovich. Do up here in the bottom half of the third inning. Brian Morozak along with Jerry Dupe. Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. We appreciate you joining us for high school baseball playoff action on this Wednesday afternoon. And the first pitch from Ray to McKnight missing there for ball one. Now the 1 0 on the way. Breaking ball missing high and inside. Down now 2 0. Ray will wind and fire the 2 0. Misses low and inside. Count now 3 0. And that's a walk, a four pitch walk to Braden McKnight. So McKnight aboard. Now Caden Early coming to the plate. Early struck out swinging, first time up. Mustangs trying to get something going here. In the bottom half of the third inning, Early lays down a bunt, well executed. Tough play there from third, but making it there, Hansen over to Oberst. But the sacrifice successful as Early advances McKnight down to second in a scoring position. Now a little discussion here between Wyatt Ringer 
and Jack Ray. Second baseman, Ty Sankovic. Now Ty Sankovic coming to the plate. Ty a single to left field last time up. It's on. It's on. Sankovic batting from the left side with McKnight at second. Fouls off the first pitch, counted 0-1. Beaver three hits so far, the lone Mustang hit. A single from Sankovic back in the bottom of the first inning. Now time called as Ty will step out. Ray glanced back at second. Now he'll step off. And they count at 0-1. This game's still scoreless. It's been nip and tuck the entire way as Sankovic fouls that one off into the parking lot. Takes the count to 0-2. Sankovic now having to protect the plate. Came in with a 400 average and 10 RBIs. 0-2 pitch on the way. Sankovic hits it on the ground. This will be a tough play here for Dorsky. was shaded over a no throw from Liam Dorsky, the shortstop. And an infield single for Ty Sankovic. So Sankovic, the only two Mustang hits of the day coming from the Mustang sophomore second baseman. And that will give the Mustangs two on with one out here in the bottom of the third. And this game's still scoreless. Kumar, well hit ball that was caught by Garrett Pander in right field. First time up. Now Ray will step off. And he'll glance back at first. First pitch here to Kumar, breaking ball in there for strike one. That's what Ray's done effectively so far this afternoon. Finding the strike zone with the first pitch and doing it there again to Nick Kumar. Now the 0-1 to Nick, fastball. A little chin music there, high and inside. Evens things up at 1-1. One and one. And the Mustangs with Braden McKnight down at third. Ty Sankovic at first. And both guys with some pretty good speed. 1-1 one, one pitch to Nick Kumar. And this is another well-hit ball in the center field. Backing up James Finch. It's over his head. And it will bounce off the top of the wall and bounce over the wall for a book rule double. So Nick Kumar, a big-time hit there for the Mustangs. Ground rule double to center field. And RBI is 20th of the season, driving in Braden McKnight and Laurel Highlands, producing the game's first run here in the bottom of the third inning. The catcher, Alex McLean. It's our second ground rule double of the afternoon. James Finch had one for Beaver. Back in the top of the first inning. Runners on second and third here for the Mustangs. And this ball going opposite field right for another hit from Alex McLean. Scoring on the play is Sankovic. Relay coming in and sliding into home safely is Nick Kumar. So Alex McLean with a two RBI single to right. And run scored by Sankovic and Kumar. That's now a 3-0 lead. For Laurel Highlands over Beaver. Now a little infield meeting here on the Bobcats side. As they try to get things together with one out here in the inning. 
We'll step aside here for a quick 30 seconds. Time out back in 30 seconds here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. It's on. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, no. back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat it's you efficiently you can, and safely by eat. taking all necessary precautions while it's disinfecting on. the clinic regularly. All insurance yeah. accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. We're back here at Ross Memorial Park in Washington and Jefferson. A 3-0 lead for Laurel Highlands over Beaver. Now at the plate for the Mustangs, Zach Koffler. And Koffler takes the first pitch for ball one. Mustangs three runs scored already here in the bottom of the third inning. Koffler the sixth Mustang to bat. And he'll pop it up. Let's go right to Brooks Miller at second base, who will make the grab for the second out of the inning. So Coughlin retired for the second time this afternoon. That'll bring up Braden O'Brien. O'Brien struck out looking first time up. The sophomore coming in with a 333 average and 10 RBIs. Alex McLean on first. And now O'Brien calling time. We have a courtesy runner, excuse me, over there at first. CJ Gask running for McLean. And O'Brien taking the first pitch for strike one. Ryan came in with a 333 average and 10 RBIs. Now the 0-1 on the way, and O'Brien hits it hard on the ground. Played there by Miller, flips it off to Dorsky for the third out of the inning. But the Mustangs able to pick up three runs here in the bottom of the third, lead the Bobcats 3 to nothing here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Day. Going on now at Steve Harper Chevy East. Our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SteveHarperChevyEast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease with the GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is plus tax title fees and first payment. Residency restrictions apply. While supplies last. Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all other details at 724-668-2231. Hi, I'm Russ Playhouse your local Allstate agent. The number 21 has always had a special meaning to me. When I was young, it meant reaching adulthood. As a lifelong Pirates fan, the number 21 meant one thing, the great Roberto Clemente. 3,000 hits, MVP, World Series hero. But more than that, a great humanitarian who will always be remembered for losing his life in a rescue mission to help those in need. And now, the number 21 represents my 21st anniversary as your local Allstate agent. I would like to thank that, like Roberto, I know the importance of community involvement as well as helping neighbors. Over the past 21 years, my staff and I have committed ourselves to learning about our customer needs and personalizing protection for them. From bundling auto, home, and life insurance with ease to evaluating optional coverages based on their protection needs. Are you in good hands? Call me. Russ Blejo at 724-439-9700. Or stop by my office on Lebanon Avenue today for a free quote. Back here at Ross Memorial Park, now moving to the top half of the fourth inning. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs now leading the Beaver Bobcats by a score of 4 to nothing. Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupe. Larry Kumar helping us out with our score hub. And Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital studios. Understand the folks back at the Triple Live High School Sports Network had a little trouble with our video feed. Hope to have it back right now for this top of the fourth. And first pitch swinging there, Dorsky sends it foul on the left side. Counted 0-1-1. Dorsky walked to lead off the top half of the second inning. Hitter 6-7-8 and eight for the Bobcats. Here in the fourth, and a ground ball there to Zach Koffler. And Koffler will step on the first base bag and make the out three unassisted for the first down of the inning. 
First baseman, Josh Obrist. And I'll bring up Josh Obrist, a junior first baseman for the Bobcats. Grounded into a fielder's choice first time up. Junior came in with a 206 average, a homer and 12 RBIs. First pitch here to Obrist, and therefore a strike 0 and 1. Now the 0-1 out of the way. Check swing from Obrist. Appeared to go. He did. We count now 0-2. From Chambers to Obrist. Now the 0-2 out of the way. Pitch misses high. Count now 1-2. and two. From Chambers to Obrist. And the Bobcats are riding a four-game winning streak. Entering the WPIL playoffs, 1-2 pitch. Missing inside, evens up the count now at 2-2. Two and two. Now the 2-2 two -two on the way, swing and a miss, strike three. It was dropped there by McLean. He needs to make the throw down to first. It was dropped by Koffler. So safe at first is Obris. Should have been the second out of the inning. So it goes as a strikeout, but the out not recorded is Koffler unable to hang on. And now they might have retired him here. I think they were saying it was outside the base path going down to first. So after all of that, Oberst is going to be ruled out. So the Mustangs catching a break there. Now Jack Ray. Coming to the plate. And Ray takes the first pitch low for ball one. Now the 1 0 on the way. The showing bunt pulls back. Count now 2 0. pitch. Low again. 3-0 now. Chambers to Ray. Ray single to right field last time up. That pitch in there for a strike and we're a 3-1. Now time call. Alex McLean will jog out and have a little discussion here with Joe Chambers. Mustangs leading three to nothing after three runs came across in that bottom half of the third inning. Started off with a single from Braden McKnight. Caden Early hit it into a fielder's choice. Ty Sankovic an infield single. Book rule RBI double from Nick Kumar. And Alex McLean picking up two RBIs on a single. And that ball hitting a foul territory on the right side. Flesher making the run and able to come up with it. Count out full three and two now. Chambers to Ray. Now three balls, two strikes, two outs. As we work here in the top of the fourth. Next pitch to Ray, foul tip, but caught by Alex McLean for the third out of the inning. So the Bobcats, it wasn't routine, but they were retired in order here in the top half of the fourth, head to the bottom of the fourth, three nothing. Laurel Highlands over Beaver here on the Sea Operata Group High School Sports Day. This is Gary Sisson from Sisson Pre-Owned. If you're looking for a great used car at a great price, Give us a call at 724-438-2819 or visit us on the web at sissonpreown.com. During these trying times, we are doing everything 100% online, from financing to virtual walk-arounds and home delivery. Visit us on the web at sissonpreown.com or give us a call, 724-438-2819. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. 
Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases. But most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. And there are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Phone 724-437-2799. Nine. Brian Rozak, Jerry Dupay, back here at the mall, uh, back here at the Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson College. Apologize for any of you folks trying to watch on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. They apparently have lost our feed. We're trying to get it back. So if you hear a few pauses from us here, we're just trying to reestablish the connection here this afternoon. Hope to get some video back to them so you could. Watch the rest of this broadcast here today as well. The Mustangs with Carson D'Amico, Joe Chambers, and Braden McKnight do up here in the home half of the fourth inning. They count out one and one. Here to Carson D'Amico. And that pitch catches the outside corner. Be two strikes now on Carson D'Amico. I think the home plate umpire there for a moment thought it was strike three. They count one and two. Now the one-two pitch on the way. Breaking ball misses high. Count now even at two and two. And the Mustangs a three-run inning in the bottom half of the third inning. Joey Chambers getting the start on the mound for the Mustangs today. Don't be surprised if we see Nick Kumar in relief at some point this afternoon. Chambers has thrown 65 pitches so far in this game. Ray entered this bottom of the fourth inning with 52 pitches thrown so far for the Beaver Bobcats. Next pitch, hit in foul territory on the right side. And over by the fence and able to make a grab on it was Oberst. And count now full of three and two against D'Amico, Chambers, and McKnight. Here in the bottom of the fourth. Three runs on four hits for the Mustangs so far. Bobcats with three hits, but they've stranded quite a few throughout the course of the afternoon. 3-2 pitch in there for strike three. Nice breaking ball from Ray, freezing D'Amico for the first out of this bottom of the fourth inning. And we do have our video back as well, so you folks that might be listening want to watch the broadcast. The video is back on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. You can log on and take a look and watch our video feed this afternoon as well. Now Joe Chambers at the plate. He struck out looking. One of four strikeout victims of Jack Ray so far here today. Now the 1-0 pitch to Chambers. This is low and outside. To even things up at 1-1. One I mentioned earlier the Bobcats playoff run from 2019. The Mustangs, who also entered the postseason as a number six seed during the 19 season, a nice playoff run of their own. Started with a first round win at Seton Hill over Kiski area. That was followed up by an 8-5 win at the Burkett Complex in Robinson Township over Hampton, and then a 4-1 win over Franklin Regional at West Mifflin High School before they fell in the 5A title game to Shaler and lost in the First round of the state playoffs to Cedar Cliff at Northern York High School. And the 3-0 pitch missing for ball four there to Joe Chambers. And Chambers aboard with a one-out walk here for the Mustangs in the bottom of the fourth. Now we'll get a courtesy runner here for Joe. I think he wanted to stay out there and run. Appeared to be a little unhappy they were pulling him. 
And it'll be Blaze Krisner to run. So Blaze Krisner running here for McKnight. First time we've seen Krisner on the base pass this season. Mainly played junior varsity ball for the Mustangs, but was one of a couple of call-ups to the varsity team for Laurel Highlands, along with Frankie Kula for the postseason. They count 1-0 now to Braden McKnight. And McKnight going opposite field left. Charging there is Zach Harris to the line. And they're going to say the ball hit the turf. So the ball hitting the turf there in front of Harris. And I don't think the Laurel Highlands realizes that. And you had Krisner who thought the ball was caught. Now he's going to be ruled out at second base. There was the tag made. The umpire's calling time, and they're all going to get together. Now, what I wonder is, was the base umpire at first calling it out over in left field, and that caused Krisner to stay on the first base bag while the umpire down the third base line ruled the fact the ball was dropped. So you had two calls that were different on the play. The first base umpire, Paul McElvain, was ruling that the ball was caught. Robert McBee down at third was ruling that the ball was not caught, but Krisner saw McIlvain's calling that the ball was caught and froze at first base. So you can't blame Krisner for not running, and now they're going to call him out. So you had two different calls on the play. Nonetheless, McKrisner was the lead runner is going to get called out. So I guess you'd, sc you'd score a fielder's choice. 7-6-4. So McKnight now aboard, and you have Caden Early first pitch swinging at the plate line drive going right to Liam Dorsky for the third out of the inning. So... Some oddities occurring here in the bottom half of the fourth. It's still 3 nothing Laurel Highlands over Beaver here on the Seattle Product Group High School Sports Day. Mom Maruka's Pizza Shop, located at 64 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mom Maruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mom Maruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor-outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit mommarukapizza.com for their menu. Going on now with your first our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is to GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Residency restrictions apply. Will supply last. Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Spring forward to home construction season. First federal of Greene County's variety of construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. First Federal gives you all the tools you need with construction loans, owner-builder loans, FHA Title I improvement loans, and home equity loans. With offices in Fayette, Green, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalgreen.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Green County, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and MLS number 458-729. Back here at Ross Memorial Park, four to check that three to nothing, three to nothing. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs leading the Beaver Bobcats. As we move here to the top of the fifth, Beaver with Zach Harris, Garrett Pander, and James Finch do up. Joey Chambers still on the mound here for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And the winner here will take on either North Catholic or Elizabeth Forward. That last check, North Catholic, a 4-1 to one lead over Elizabeth Forward. That game in the fourth inning at Fox Chapel High School. Appreciate you joining us. Whether you're watching our broadcast on the Triple Live High School Sports Network, the link up on the WMBS Facebook page, or listening on WMBS 590 AM, 101.1 FM, or on our WMBS web stream as well. Zach Harris taking the first pitch low and outside from Joey Chambers. Count at 1-0. Oh. 
Now Chambers 1-0 pitch. Fastball in there for a strike. Evens things up at 1-1. One and, one. and behind Harris is Garrett Pander and James Finch. Hitters 9-1-2 and two for the Bobcats here in the top half of the fifth. Check swing there from Harris. Pitch was outside. Count now at 2-1. and one. And the winner here today will play in the quarterfinal round on Monday. 2-1 pitch on the way. Fastball misses low and outside. Count now 3-1. and one. Chambers to Harris. Chambers now long looking. 3-1 pitch on the way. And this one chopped foul on the left side. Count now 4-3-2. and two. Chambers ready with the payoff pitch here to Zach Harris. Fastball in there for strike three. So Chambers, who struck out Oberst and Ray to end the fourth, sends down Harris to start the fifth. And so far for Chambers, that's six strikeouts in this game. And the Mustangs, three runs on four hits. Beaver, three hits in one air so far. And now Garrett Pander at the plate. Pander 0 for 1, did walk last time up. Takes the first pitch here outside for ball 1. Came in with a 3-12 average, a homer and 4 RBIs for the Bobcats junior right fielder. Now the 1-0 pitch. Misses high and outside again, 2-0. Now the 2-0 from Joey Chambers to Pander on the inside. Almost hit him. Pander able to get out of the way of it. Count now 3-0. And Larry just confirming we had Joey with 65 pitches through four innings. So approaching 70 pitches here in the fifth. Finds the strike zone there to Garrett Pander in the count of 3-1. It might be tough for Joey to get out of this one under 100 pitches. And he'll walk Pander here for the second time in this game. Now Pander aboard with one out here in the top of the fifth. And James Finch coming to the plate. 76 pitches now in this game for Joey Chambers. Finch came in at 265 average and four RBIs. He's two for two today. Book rule double in the first, single to left field in the third. Joey Long looking to the catcher, Alex McLean, with Pander on first. Breaking ball misses outside for ball one. Have to be happy, though, with the performance from Joey Chambers so far in this game. Just three hits issued, has gotten out of a number of jams. Bobcats stranding Finch in the first. That pitch misses inside. Now 2 0 to James Finch. In the second inning, Liam Dorsky walked and Jack Ray single. They both got stranded. And in the third, you had Pander that walked and Finch that singled. And they got stranded as well. Only one, two, three inning was in the fourth inning when Dorsky was retired, three unassisted, and then Obrist and Ray struck outs. Count now two and one here. Chambers to Finch. Throw over to first, head for a slide back safely there from Garrett Pander. Now Chambers 2-1 on the way. Again misses low and outside to James Finch. And the count of three and one. Mustangs trying to protect the three-run cushion. 3-1 pitch here to Finch. Hard hit ball. Glove there by Koffler. Steps on the first base bag and then one hops it down the second to Nick Kumar who was covering the bag. The only out recorded at first. Goes a fielder's choice. 
as Pander advances down to second on the play. Actually a sacrifice as Pander able to advance into scoring position with Braden Hansen now coming to the plate. Hansen sacrificed last time up, struck out back in the first inning. And the Bobcats again with a runner in scoring position, two outs in an inning, and a nice breaking ball there from Joey Chambers finding the strike zone of Braden Hansen, and the count at 0-1. Chambers now over 80 pitches in this game. And the 0-1 pitch here on the way. Breaking ball and therefore a strike 0-2 now. To Hanson who came in with a 261 average and 11 RBIs. Senior third baseman for the Bobcats. Hoping it's not his last high school game here today. Now Chambers with an 0-2 count. Pitch on the way, another breaking ball, and it was dropped there by the catcher, McLean, who has to make the throw to first, does so successfully to Zach Koffler, retire. Hanson goes in the books as a strikeout. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Laurel Highlands still up 3 to nothing over Beaver here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer wishes the best of luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs this season and in the playoffs. During these uncertain times, a lot of hard work goes into a successful season, and that includes the cooperation of players, coaches, and their families. South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer commends all of those whose hard work has gone into making this a successful season. Like our local teams, Robert Schiffbauer is working hard to make life better for the residents of South Union Township. Good luck to the Laurel Highlands Mustangs from South Union Township Supervisor Robert Schiffbauer. With the rest of the world, Peach and Pharmacy is following the developments of the COVID-19 pandemic. Your safety is a priority at Peach and Pharmacy. For prescriptions, you have many options. Peachins offers free delivery, free mail, and curbside pickup. If you come into the store, Peachins follows all of the CDC and state safety recommendations. As always, if you have concerns about your medications, call 724-626-9600 or visit Peach and Pharmacy inside the Peach and Market in Connellsville or online at Peach and Pharmacy. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. New pitcher for the Beaver Bobcats as we come back. It's Mitch Lang, the sophomore, making only his second appearance of the season. Has worked only one inning, giving up one hit, one run. It was not earned. He did strike out two and has not issued any walks so far this season. So Lang making only his second appearance of the season. I don't notice any other defensive changes here for the Bobcats, but again, Lang now into pitch in place of Jack Ray. So we'll close the book on Ray, who went four innings for the Bobcats. Did strike out four, walked two, and gave up four hits and three runs. And all of those runs earned runs for Jack Ray. Ty Sankovic leading off the bottom half of the fifth here for the Mustangs. Takes ball one outside now. Facing Mitchell Lang, who certainly presents a different look for the Mustangs on the mound. Lang will wind and fire and has a little slight sidearm delivery there. Not quite straight away. Target number seven on his back. Cut out one and one here to Ty Sankovic. And Sankovic a successful afternoon so far. Single to left field back in the first inning. Infield single and scored a run in the third. Sophomore second baseman came in with a 400 average and 10 RBIs. And the winner will play in the quarterfinals on Monday as time called. On a 1-1 pitch, and Sankovic trying to dig it out and send it foul. The count now 1-2. and two. A 
So Lang trying to make an early impact on the mound. Sankovic choking up on the bat. 1-2 pitch. Fastball misses outside, even at 2-2 two two now. Lang to Sankovic. And you're listening and watching high school baseball playoff action here on WMBS Uniontown, the Triple Live High School Sports Network. 2-2 pitch on the way again. Sankovic pops it foul. Count remains 2-2. Two two. Now last check, North Catholic up 4-1 over Elizabeth Ford. And the winner here will take on either the Trojans or the Warriors. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Lang comes into the game, strikes out Sankovic, and Sankovic retired for the first time this afternoon. Now Nick Kumar will come to the plate. Kumar, a ground rule double last time up. Scored a run for the Mustangs. All three of the Mustang runs scored in the bottom half of the third inning. First pitch here to Nick. Breaking ball misses low for ball one. Mitch Lang starting his first inning of relief work in place of Jack Ray here in the bottom of the fifth. 1-0 now to Nick Kumar. Brought the fastball, swing and a miss there from Nick. And the count even at 1-1. One one. Again, our first of two here on WMBS Game 2. We'll have the California Trojans taking on Shady Side Academy at Hempfield High School. First pitch there scheduled for 4.30. Tony Hanul will bring you that game here on WMBS as Kumar. They're going to award first base. There's not going to be catcher interference there again. So catcher interference is the call again. Second time we've seen that called on Wyatt Ringer. So Kumar awarded first. Mustangs will take it. Now Alex McLean, who had a two RBI single to right field last time up, comes to the plate. Carl Highlands looking for a few more insurance runs. Already up three to nothing. First pitch here to McLean, breaking ball, and therefore a strike 0 1. Now the 0 1. Lang to McLean. Runner going, pitch missed for a ball, throw down a second. Hopped over the glove of second baseman Brooks Miller. Backed up there by Leem Dorsky. But into second safely there is Kumar. And the Mustangs are runner in scoring position. A 1 1 count now on Alex McLean. Now a little discussion here between Lang and Ringer. And pitcher and catcher getting together here for the Bobcats. Trying to talk things out. Nick about a two-step lead off second. Playing set to go here again on the mound. Now time called here again. Now we're starting to get some head games, I think, between Kumar at second. McLean, who's at the plate, the pitcher laying, and the catcher Ringer, and did McLean get hits? Yes, he did. So Alex McLean hit by a pitch, awarded first base. And the Mustangs with runners on first and second now with Zach Koffler coming to the plate, leading three to nothing. First baseman, Zach Koffler. Zach. Zach, a pair of fly ball outs so far in this game. One was a liner that Liam Dorsky caught from the shortstop position at second base, and the other was... Grabbed by the second baseman, Brooks Miller, back in the third inning. So Koffler 0 for 2 today. And does have some pop in his bat. A homer and 12 RBI so far this season. And Lang steps off again. So a big spot in this game for the Beaver Bobcats. Already down 3. 
Don't want to allow the Mustangs to get any farther ahead in this contest. And that one missing high and inside. Both runners taking off. Throw down to third, and Nick Kumar safe at third. Actually, check that. Nick was the only runner to go on the play. The courtesy runner, Gesk, for McLean did not go down to second. So now runners on the corners here for the Mustangs. And they count 1-0 to Zach Koffler. And taking his time is Mitchell Lang. Now Koffler showing bunt, fouls it off. Count even at 1-1. One and one. The Bobcats in the top of the sixth will have hitters 4, 5, and 6 due up. Elijah Crow, Brooks Miller, and Liam Dorsky. Mustangs trying to put them farther behind. Langs 1-1 one, one here to Koffler. Shows Bunt lays it down the first baseline. This will score a run as Obris makes the play. Three unassisted to give Koffler his 13th RBI of the season. Drives in Nick Kumar, his second scored run of the day. And the Mustangs lead now up to 4-0. Now two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. The Mustangs designated hitter Braden O'Brien coming to the plate. O'Brien 0 for 2 today, sophomore DH. Now it's C.J. Gesk on second. First pitch misses low and outside from Mitch Lang. Count now 1-0 here to Braden O'Brien. Lang's 1-0, low and outside again to O'Brien. Count now at 2-0. Now the 2-0. Big time swing there from O'Brien going around. Count now 2-1. Again, this is the first of three games being played here in Washington today at Ross Memorial Park. Up next, Peters Township and South Fayette. That'll be followed by Chartiers Valley and Bethel Park. Got now three and one here to Braden O'Brien. Again, we'll have 2A action up next on WMBS, California and Shadyside Academy from Hemfield High School. Now Langs 3-1 here to Braden O'Brien. O'Brien chops it foul on the left side. Count goes full now, 3-2. and two. Mustangs three runs in the bottom of the third, attacking on a run here in the bottom half of the fifth. Now the payoff pitch, Mitch Lang to Braden O'Brien. It's on the way, and O'Brien stays alive, fouling it off again. Other action going on today in 4A. Newcastle and Indiana just underway. Winner there will take on West Mifflin. Those two teams playing at Pullman Park. Highlands and Bell Vernon will get underway at 4.30 at Plum today. Again, North Catholic leading Elizabeth Forward 4-1. to one. That game in the fifth now at Elizabeth Forward. Chopped there by O'Brien. Glove by Dorsky. Long throw over to first in time to Josh Obris to retire. Braden O'Brien 6-3, but the Mustangs tack on another run here in the bottom half of the fifth. After five, it's Laurel Highlands 4, Beaver nothing here on the C.R. Brada Group High School Sports Set. Going on now at C. Harper Chevy East. Our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit charperchevyeast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease with the GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is plus tax title fees and for payment. Residency restrictions apply. Well supplies last. Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all other details at 724-668-2231. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppe and I, 
encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. Casey Sports Cafe, owned by the Vernon family, is located on South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Casey's has reopened for dining and services with new hours Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Meals are home cooked and arranged from a variety of steaks, chicken and veal parmesan, liver and onions, along with appetizers, salads, wings, and sandwiches. Casey's offers free delivery in the Uniontown area with purchases of $10 or more. Phone 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cafe. Back here at Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson College, a new hitter here for Beaver as Jason Shalcross into the game for the Beaver Bobcats. Elijah Crow was 0 for 2 as the DH here today. So now Shalcross into the game for the first time. He'll take the first pitch low for ball one. That was pitch 86 thrown of the afternoon for Joey Chambers on the mound. Nick Kumar has already warmed up for Laurel Highlands. So he'll be ready to go if needed. Again, Chambers still has two innings to try to get through and will have to stay under 100 pitches if he wants to remain in the game. So that might be tough for Chambers to do, but no doubt Kumar is ready to go. And the Mustangs a powerful one-two punch on the mound this season. That one fouled off by Shalcross. Takes the count now to one and two. And Shalcross came into this game good average, 320 on the season. No homers and seven RBIs. He's been productive at the plate for the Beaver Bobcats and Noah Medich's squad. Count now one and two. Chambers to Shalcross. And Shawcross, a well-hit ball here to third. Braden McKnight there, throw over to first in time to Zach Koffler to retire Shawcross 5-3 for the first out of this top half of the sixth inning. And that'll bring up Brooks Miller. Miller, the second baseman, Brooks Miller. senior second baseman, also 0 for 2 today. Struck out looking back in the second inning. Flew out to Jake Flesh around and right in the third inning. Now the first pitch, and therefore a strike to Miller. They counted 0-1. And just a correction for the postseason, pitchers allowed 105 pitches instead of the normal 100 for the regular season, so a little more wiggle room there for Joey Chambers. And now Brooks Miller behind 0-2. Forgot that rule was instituted a couple of years ago. No two-pitch on the way, and Miller went a chase, and that's strike three. Now eight strikeouts for Joey Chambers here today. And two up, two down here in the top half of the sixth inning. And I'll bring up Liam Dorsky. Dorsky walked back in the second inning and grounded out three unassisted in the fourth inning. Dorsky came into the game with a 262 average and 12 RBIs. First pitch from Chambers and Dorsky hits it high in the air to right field, charging his flesher, and the Mustangs are able to come up with it. Tyler Sankovich backed up from second base and got to the ball after it dropped between Flesher, Sankovich, and Koffler out there in shallow right field. So that'll give the Bobcats a base runner. Here in the top of the sixth inning with two outs and Josh Obrist Coming to the plate, fourth hit of the afternoon for the Bobcats. Now Chambers from the stretch. Misses outside on the first pitch there to Obrist. And they count at 1-0. Oh. Obrist, the junior first baseman, came in with a 2.06 average, a homer and 12 RBIs. He's 0 for 2 today. 1-0 oh pitch on the way, and Obrist chopping that one foul. Even up the count at 1-1. One and Tony Hanola will have game two of our doubleheader here on WMBS next with California taking on Shady Sound Academy at Hempfield High School. We'll try to sneak in a news break time permitting in between our contest and the California Shady Sound Academy game for you. Breaking ball missing low there from Chambers. Takes the count to 2-1. and one. Here to Josh Obrist. And again, more playoff baseball on WMBS tomorrow. Brownsville taking on South Park. 
That game will be played at West Mifflin High School. And Oberst, a little chopper here. Could be a tough play. Glove by Chambers, and he has no play. Stepped in front of Braden McKnight. Not sure if McKnight would have been able to make the play either. Well, goes an infield single. Fourth, check that fifth hit of the afternoon now for the Bobcats. And Beaver with two on and two outs here in the top half of the sixth. With a pitcher spot now coming up. And Marco Mamone will pinch hit. So Mamone on to pinch hit now for the Bobcats. Take a look at his numbers so far this season. A 357 average for Mamone, a senior. Just one RBI, 16 plate appearances, 14 at bats for Mamone. And now Scott DeBerry out. We see a pitching change here for the Mustangs. We will. So Joey Chambers will exit. Nick Kumar on in relief. And we'll be back in 90 seconds. Tell you about the new Mustang pitcher here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Day. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sproul's Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprawlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken? taken out of service industries. It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family-owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. Nick Kumar now on in relief of Joe Chambers for Nick. He enters the game with a 5-1 record, 2.12 ERA. Has worked 33 innings, given up 25 hits, 14 runs, 10 of them earned, struck out 53 and walked only 20 so far this season. And for Kumar, it's already his ninth appearance on the mound this season for the Mustangs. Misses on the first pitch to Marco Mamone. So Mamone trying to get something going here for the Bobcats. Two ounces who work here on the top of the sixth. Laurel Highlands up four to nothing. Beaver threatening. And Kumar finds the strike zone there with a nice fastball to Mamone. Even up the count at one and one. Again, Mamone batting in the pitcher's spot. That was previously occupied by Jack Ray. Mitch Lang pitched the last inning for the Bobcats. And don't be surprised if we see another pitcher for Beaver. In the next inning, and a wild pitch there from Nick Kumar allows the Bobcat runners to advance. Dorsky now down to third, Obrist into second. And now two in scoring position, a 2-1 count here from Kumar to Mamone. For the Mustangs up four to nothing. And Laurel Highlands trying to close out this game against the Beaver Bobcats. 2-1 pitch, and Mamone sends it foul on the right side. Takes the count to two and two. Again, we mentioned that solid strikeouts to walks ratio from Nick so far this season. That's two strikes here on Mamone. The 2-2 two -two pitch, a little one-hopper block there by Alex McLean. The count now full of three and two. First base is open. And Zach Harris, the left fielder, due up next for the Bobcats. Big pitch here for Nick Kumar. Again, Nick coming in, 53 strikeouts to 20 walks on the season. 3-2 pitch here is low and outside for ball four, and that'll load up the bases. So Kumar walks Mamone, and the game-tying run, and Zach Harris coming to the plates. Harris 0 for 2 today. 
Flew out to Jake Flesher and right back in the second inning. Struck out looking, facing Joe Chambers in the fifth. First pitch here, a little one hopper from Kumar, blocked by McLean and a 1 0 count here to Zach Harris. So a little juice back in the Bobcats dugout as they try to rally back here in the top half of the sixth inning. Count 1 0 here to Zach Harris. And that pitch, a fastball, catches the outside corner for a strike, evens things up at one and one. The Bobcats, five hits so far this afternoon, have not picked up a run. They've committed two errors. The Mustangs, four runs on four hits. One one pitch here, fouled off by Zach Harris. And now Kumar, a strike away from getting out of a bases loaded jam here in the top half of the sixth inning. So Kumar, a 1-2 count here to Zach Harris. And it will wind and fire. Breaking ball, Harris hits it hard on the ground. Glove there by McKnight, who steps on the third base bag for the final out of the inning. So once again, Laurel Highlands gets out of a jam. Bobcats strand three. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth, 4-0. Laurel Highlands over Beaver here on the CR Brada Group High School Sports Day. Going on now with your Bridge Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2021 Chevy Equinox for only $169 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is to GMS for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles yearly with $3,000 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Security deposit waived. Payment is for cash, title fees, and first payments. Residence fee with checks supply. Or supply last. Sale ends June 1st, 2021. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Sam Davis was a gift from Avenue. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724 Four three seven two seven nine nine. Bring forward to home construction season. First Federal of Greene County's variety of construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. First Federal gives you all the tools you need with construction loans, owner builder loans, FHA Title I improvement loans, and home equity loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and MLS number number 458729. Back here at Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson. New pitcher for the Beaver Bobcats is Braden Hansen. Number of defensive changes as well. Hansen was playing third base. Brooks Miller moves over from second now to play third. And Marco Mamone, who was at the plate in the last half inning, is now playing second base for the Bobcats. So you have Hansen pitching, Miller now down at third, and Mamone at second. For Laurel Highlands here in the bottom half of the sixth, will be hitters seven, eight, and nine. Carson D'Amico, Joe Chambers, and Braden McKnight coming to the plate. I'll tell you a little bit about Braden Hansen here as well. Again, the third pitcher the Bobcats have used here this afternoon. And for Hansen, this will be his sixth appearance of the season. Comes in with a one and one record, a 5.92 ERA. Hansen has worked 13 innings, given up 17 hits, 15 runs, 11 of them earned, struck out 19 and walked 11 so far this season. Now Carson D'Amico coming to the plate. Carson got on via catcher's interference back in the second inning, struck out looking back in the fourth inning, so his third plate appearance of the afternoon and the first pitch from Braden Hansen, a swing and a miss there from Carson, takes the count to 0-1. And Laurel Highlands leading 4 to nothing. if you're just joining us. The Mustangs, three runs in the bottom of the third inning, tacked on a run in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Well, now the 0-1 pitch on the way. Breaking ball hits D'Amico in the back. Not much Carson could do to get out of the way of that one. So Carson aboard. Leadoff runner now for the Mustangs. Here in the home half of the sixth, and Joe Chambers now will come to the plate. Chambers struck out looking back in the second inning, walked in the fourth inning. Was the Mustangs' starting pitcher here today, now playing second base. Looks like we 
have a courtesy runner down at second. It'll be a pinch running situation. Oh. Now it is D'Amico running over there at first. And Chambers at the plate. Count 1-0 and oh, and watch for Chambers maybe to sacrifice here. Showing bunts and lays it down. A little one-hopper in front of Hanson. Throws back to second. Not in time. So Hanson trying to go after the lead runner. Sliding into second safely was Carson D'Amico. And the Mustangs with two on and nobody out here in the bottom half of the sixth. Third baseman, Braden That'll bring up Braden McKnight. McKnight walked and scored a run in the third inning. Came to a fielder's choice last time up. Which was an odd play on a shallow fly ball to left that one umpire said the ball dropped in front of Harris. The other said it was caught. And then Blaze Krisner, who was the courtesy runner at the time for the pitcher Chambers, did not advance, thinking the ball was caught. And then was rolled down at second base. And once again, McKnight laying down a bunt. And they'll go after the lead runner. This time retired safely, but they're going to get D'Amico here with a slide that he attempted to take out Miller, the third baseman. Umpires now getting together here. Not sure you would have had any other play that would have been able to get made. And hopefully we don't have a disqualification situation here. On the Laurel Highland side. Umpires still talking it over. Garrett Proper, Paul McElvain, and Robert McBee. One out recorded. Here in the bottom half of the sixth, Laurel Highlands up four to nothing. They're going to say the runner at third out and the batter's out on the play due to the slide, and Scott DeBerry is extremely upset about it. So the rule McKnight out as well. And two quick outs are recorded here by Beaver defensively. We'll just leave Joe Chambers at second base. And now Caden Early at the plate. And our umpire crew hearing about it from the Mustang faithful. On top of the order now up for Laurel Highlands and Caden Early. And Hanson on the mound. First pitch here to Early. This is outside for ball one. Again, the Bobcats will be down to their final three outs in the top of the seventh inning. They will the top of the order up. Garrett Pander, James Finch, and Braden Hanson. Count 1-0 and oh here to Caden Early. 1-0 pitch. Early fouls it back. Right into the netting in front of us. Mustangs trying to hang on here. I'd be happy to tack on an insurance run. Hanson's 1-1 here to Caden Early. Swing get a miss there from Caden. Count out 1-2. and two. And we've had some calls you don't see every day in this game. A couple of catcher interference calls. We had a situation where a Mustang was hit by a pitch and then not awarded first base for not getting out of the way. A controversial fly ball was it caught, was it not by Harris out and left. And then a hard slide from D'Amico, really McKnight, who was the batter, out along with himself at third base. Count out two and two, Hanson to early with Chambers on second. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way early, a well-hit ball, and that one will drop in front of the right fielder, Garrett Pander. Joe Chambers rounds third. He'll score the fifth Mustang run of the afternoon. So tack another one on for Laurel Highlands as the Mustangs now lead it 5 to nothing. So an RBI single to right field for Caden Early. 
Early's ninth RBI of the season. And that'll bring up Ty Sankovic now for the Mustangs. Sankovic two for three today. First pitch to Ty, and the first pitch swinging here, hit high in the air to left field. Zach Harris gets under it, makes the grab for the third out of the inning. But the Mustangs tack another one on. Here in the bottom of the sixth, they lead it five to nothing. Bobcats down to their final three outs, and we come back here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. Are you looking for a rewarding career? M&R Transit is now hiring van drivers. Van drivers must be 26 years of age, have a valid driver license, and a clean driving record. Van drivers must be able to obtain all clearances. For more information, call 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164 or apply in person at m and Transit, 253 South Mount Vernon Avenue. m and Transit wishes the Laurel Highlands Mustangs good luck. Casey Sports Cafe owned by the Vernon family is located on South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Casey's has reopened for dining services with new hours Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Meals are home cooked and arranged from a variety of steaks, chicken and veal parmesan, liver and onions along with appetizers, salads, wings and sandwiches. Casey's offers free delivery in the Uniontown area with purchases of $10 or more. Phone 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cafe. Back here at Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson College. Laurel Highlands looking to make another WPIL playoff run. Off to a good start so far this afternoon. A 5 to nothing lead over the Beaver Bobcats. Bobcats now down to their final three outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Garrett Pander, James Finch, and Braden Hansen do up. Hitters 1, 2, and 3 in their lineup. Nick Kumar on in relief of Joe Chambers. Came on in the top half of the sixth inning. And now the Mustangs trying to Close this one out. And again, they'll play either North Catholic or Elizabeth Forward in the quarterfinal round on Monday at last check. North Catholic up over Elizabeth Forward in that contest. Get our first of two here on WMBS. Stay tuned. Up next, California taking on Shady Side Academy at Hempfield High School. Tony Hanola standing by to bring you that game later on this afternoon. First pitch scheduled for 4.30 here on WMBS and the Triple Live High School Sports Network. So Garrett Pander 0 for 1, but he's walked twice in this game. Leading off the top half of the seventh here for the Bobcats. And the first pitch a little high and inside from Nick Kumar on the count at 1-0. Again, the quarterfinal and semifinal round in 4A next week will be played on Monday and Tuesday. These teams will certainly have their pitching tested Playing on consecutive days. 1-0 pitch in there for a strike as Pander was showing bunt pulled back. Mustangs were charging from first and third. Count now even at 1-1. One one. Kumar to Pander. Fastball chopped over the head of Kumar. Glove there by Sankovic. Throw over to first in time to Zach Koffler to retire Pander 6-3. Another tough play but made there by Sankovic who had a run off to his left. And snare that hard ground ball from Pander. Whiz to throw over to Zach Koffler at first. And Pander retired 6-3 for the first out of this top half of the seventh inning. And now James Finch at the plate. And he's had a busy afternoon. Ground rule double back in the first inning. Single to left field in the third inning. And got on via fielder's choice in the fifth. First pitch here. And there for a strike, Kumar to Finch, 0-1. Finch came into the game with a 265 average and four RBIs. Bobcat senior center fielder. Now Kumar's 0-1 on the way. That one catches the outside corner for strike two. Just like that, the count 0-2. And if the Mustangs hang on, we'll have their quarterfinal round game for you here on Monday. Kumar, a little hesitation, made the pitch and got the strikeout. Nick's pitch rotation looked a little bit like Charles Barkley's golf swing there, but he delivered the pitch and got the out. Just kind of stopped midway through, but then continued through, and what a nice pitch there to strike out Finch for the second out of the inning. And now Braden Hanson, the last hope here for the Bobcats. First pitch from Kumar, low for ball one. Have to thank our video stream sponsors this afternoon as well. MNR Transit in Uniontown and Ted Silva and Son Auto and Fender Repair. 1 0 pitch on the way. Catches the inside corner for a strike, and we're even at 1 and 1. 
Jerry Dupay has done a nice job behind the camera all afternoon. I have to thank Larry Kumar for his help as well. Running our score hub and Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios as that one's fouled off by Braden Hansen. And the Bobcats now down to their final strike. As the Mustangs try to earn a trip into the WPIL quarterfinals. One two pitch, a little one hopper. Got now even at two and two. Mustang dugout telling Nick, take a deep breath. Now he's focused. No wind and fire the 2-2 here to Braden. Hansen, another fastball, catches the outside corner for strike three, and the Mustangs heading back to the WPIL quarterfinals. A 5 to nothing win over the Beaver Bobcats this afternoon from Ross Memorial Park in Washington. We're back to tell you all about it here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sproul's Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprawlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken? taken out of service industries. It's too bad, because people are busy these days, at life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service, real service, from a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank, at your service. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. Back here at Ross Memorial Park, Laurel this Highlands of Dr. Fraser Stokes. Did you know that colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer in America, or that it can be prevented by removing polyps during a 30-minute colonoscopy? At SWGI, our board-certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Ruth Hart Calabrese Hoppy and I, encourage you to consider a screening colonoscopy. Call 724-437-7677 or visit swgispecialists.com. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. for bankruptcy is not something that anyone wants to do. Good people sometimes run into hard times, and they need help. Hi, I'm Dan White with the law offices of Zebley Mahalov and White, and I'm here to help. If you're faced with insurmountable debt and are out of options and you need help, give our office a call today. Allow us to help you understand your rights and options under the law. Filing bankruptcy is not the end of the road, and if you're struggling with debt, it very well could be a new beginning. So stop worrying and take action. Give our office a call today at 724-439-9200 or click on zeblaw.com for more information. Zebley Mahalov and White, local attorneys helping local people. Let us help you fix your life.
with the rest of the world, Peach and Pharmacy is following the developments of the COVID-19 pandemic. Your safety is a priority at Peach and Pharmacy. For prescriptions, you have many options. Peachins offers free delivery, free mail, and curbside pickup. If you come into the store, Peachins follows all of the CDC and state safety recommendations. As always, if you have concerns about your medications, call 724-626-9600 or visit Peach and Pharmacy inside the Peach and Market in Connellsville or online at Peach and Pharmacy. Back here at Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson College. Laurel Highlands a 5 to nothing WPIL first round playoff win over the Beaver Bobcats. Laurel Highlands striking first in the bottom half of the third inning. The inning started with Braden McKnight walking and then Caden Early hitting into a fielder's choice. Ty Sankovich an infield single. Then Nick Kumar a book rule double picked up an RBI driving in McKnight. Then Alex McLean, a two RBI single to right field, drove in both Sankovic and Kumar. Give Laurel Highlands a three to nothing lead. The Mustangs added a run in the fifth inning after Ty Sankovic struck out swinging to start the inning. Nick Kumar got on via catcher interference. Alex McLean was hit by a pitch, and Zach Koffler's ground ball to first base scored Kumar on the play to make it four to nothing. The Mustangs getting another insurance run in the sixth inning. The inning started with Carson D'Amico getting hit by a pitch. Joe Chambers a bunt single, and then Braden McKnight hitting into a controversial fielder's choice. Ended up being a double play after an illegal slide was called on Carson D'Amico in the third. So McKnight was ruled out as the batter at the plate. But then Caden Early, a single to right field, scored Chambers on the play to make it 5 to nothing, And that would end the scoring for the game today. Joe Chambers got the start and once again was stellar on the mound for Laurel Highland striking out. Eight, Nick Kumar coming on in relief. And Chambers and Kumar combining on the shutout in the Mustangs. 5 to nothing win. A reminder that this game and the broadcast rights to this game are the sole and exclusive property of the WPIL, WMBS, and the Triple Live High School Sports Network. Any broadcast of this game is intended exclusively for the benefit of the listening and viewing audience in a use, rebroadcast, distribution of this broadcast without the express written consent of the WPIL. WMBS and the Triple Live High School Sports Network is strictly prohibited. Laurel Island's a 5 to nothing win over Beaver. We're back to wrap things up from Ross Memorial Park right after this here on WMBS and on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. At what point did everything change? When did service get taken out of service industries? It's too bad, because people are busy these days. At life, at work, at play. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you want service. Real service. From a person you know and a face you trust. At a bank where changing with the times doesn't mean leaving people behind. We're proud to be a part of your community. We're United Bank. At your service. of Uniontown and trade me in. Is your car trying to tell you something? With summer right around the corner and trading values so high and new inventory so low, why not trade it in for a certified pre-owned at Ford of Uniontown? And for your peace of mind, all of our gold certified go through a 172-point checkover. They come standard with a 7-year, 100,000-mile comprehensive warranty. And all of our blue certified come with a 139-point checkover and a 3-month or 4,000-mile powertrain warranty with over 70 pre-owned units ready to go and financing as low as 299 for 60 months why not listen to your car and take advantage of a great selection of cars trucks and suvs that's ford of uniontown top of the hill across from applebee's 724-425-5980 or ford of uniontown.com must qualify with Ford Motor Credit. I'm attorney Bill Martin of Radcliffe Law, and I've handled all sorts of workplace accident cases over the past 10 years. When you're hurt at work, your employer's main goal is to get you back to work. But you may not be physically ready to return. If you find yourself in a similar situation, call our workers' compensation team at Radcliffe Law at 724-439-3939 meet with you and answer your questions at no cost. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. You've been listening to the Sea Harbor Honor Group High School Sports Day coverage of high school baseball. Back here wrapping things up at Ross Memorial Park at Washington and Jefferson. Again, your final score, 5 to nothing. Laurel Highlands over Beaver. 
Mustangs improved to 14 and 5 overall. Again, they'll play in the quarterfinal round on Monday against either Elizabeth Ford or North Catholic. The Bobcats season ends with a record of 7 and 11. Stay tuned. More high school baseball playoff action on the way next after a news break here on WMBS California. We'll be taking on Shady Side Academy at Hempfield High School. Tony Hanula standing by to bring you all of that action here on WMBS and on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. Five to nothing. Your final score here from Ross Memorial Park for Jerry Dupay, Larry Kumar. Thanks for helping us out as well. And Bill Madden back inside our WVU Medicine Union Set Hospital Studios. This is Brian Morosex and have yourselves a pleasant afternoon. Again, your final score, Laurel Highlands 5 and Beaver nothing. So long, everybody, from Ross Memorial Park.